Welcome to Saturday Agenda, fellow Earthians. I'm Chris Kenny. Fellow Earthians, that's how Bob Brown introduced his audience at a speech recently where he talked about his plan for a new world government. We'll come to that rather kooky speech in just a moment. Later in the program, we'll be talking about some of the other political developments during the week with some heavy hitters from the Labor side and the Liberal side. We'll talk about the Queensland election result and the following national news poll and ask whether or not the Labor government, the federal Labor government, is in denial about what these messages are telling them. We'll also look at the nanny debate and ask why the opposition would question advice from one of Australia's leading national security agencies. But first, let's go to that speech by Bob Brown. It was the third annual Green Oration in Hobart last week. He did start it off by introducing himself to the audience and saying fellow Earthians. He talked about some rather cataclysmic predictions for life on Earth. He suggested also we should save the planet through one world government. Joining us now to talk about that speech is his fellow Green Senator. I should add, of course, that Senator Bob Brown is out of the country at the moment in Africa. So we're joined by his colleague, Senator Lee Rhiannon. Thanks for joining us, Lee. Good morning. It's uh, uh, quite an extraordinary speech, I, I, I think, uh, Senator Rhiannon, to talk about, you know, fellow Earthians and the threat to life on this planet and the need for one new world government. Can you explain to us what on earth this was all about? Well, it's um, firstly, I think we need to make a correction to what you said there. He was speaking about one, a one world parliament, which actually isn't a new concept. It's uh, been advanced a number of times. And uh, Bob, Senator Bob Brown, put his name to a letter in 2010 signed by 700 parliamentarians and leading figures calling for a United Nations elected parliamentary assembly. And it would be a democratic way to address a very serious problem the world is facing. Well, you talked about one vote, one value. Now, on my rough arithmetic, if we had one vote, one value, and say the country of Tuvalu had a seat in this parliament, then the country of China would have 130,000 seats in Parliament. I mean, it's just nonsensical, isn't it? No, it's not nonsensical at all. Uh, we have some enormous challenges, and Bob was essentially dealing with the issue of democracy. That is the key way that we can meet these challenges. It was actually a very inspiring speech. He certainly went out there and was challenging, but Bob often does that, and surely we would welcome that in our parliamentarians. It's certainly refreshing after all those speeches from the opposition leader, Tony Abbott, that is basically talking and you know, criticising another form of tax and presenting himself as some fluoro jacket. Here you had a considered speech by Bob that was challenging and I think it's been disappointing that the media just seems to get fixated on having a toxic response rather than looking in depth to what was said. Well, I think it's disappointing. We haven't seen more about it in the, in the media. I think people should see more of this speech because I think Bob Brown and your party and, of course, yourself, you have the balance of power. You are exerting a lot of influence over the government. You're in formal alliance with the government. And to be going off talking about this new world government rather than concentrating on the issues that are facing Australia today, I think would be of concern to most people. Uh, look, Chris, uh, we certainly welcome the scrutiny, absolutely. But again, to spell out what Bob was advancing, when he signed on to this whole idea back in 2010, it was also supported by a former head of the World Trade Organisation, Michael Moore, who was also a former Prime Minister of New Zealand, uh, Boutros Boutros Ghali, a former leader of the United Nations, and um, also um, Mr Havel, former uh, Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia. So it's not a fringe idea at all. Democracy will be critical in terms of how we come together as a planet to handle climate change, to handle the dwindling resources, how we ensure that they are still there for future generations and we use them wisely. I, I was really pleased that Bob made the speech and I think it's worth remembering Chris, obviously from your tone you're also critical, but in, when Bob came into Parliament in 1996, he spoke about climate change and he was ridiculed at the time. Now, so many people recognise that he was really out there um, giving leadership on an issue that so many people now recognise has to be a priority for any government. But don't you 
concede that a lot of your critics would say that the Greens are more interested in these international gestures, in gestures towards the United Nations and this theoretical one world government, that you're more focused on those issues than on the prospects and challenges that confront Australia today. And isn't this sort of really quite crazy idea, because you and I both know it's never going to happen in, 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 a, in the next four generations, ten generations. Is, doesn't that just play into the, the hands of your critics? Oh no! Look, not at all, Chris. If not at all, Chris, if you look at how the work that um, we're doing in the Australian Parliament, state parliaments, local government, we're out there working on a whole range of issues. Adam Bant, my colleague uh, from the Melbourne, the seat of Melbourne, he is doing so much work addressing overcharging by banks, uh, cost of living issues. He took up the issue that the. Um, car, the subsidies that's gone to the car industry need to include support for electric cars. We're out there with so, so many ideas on the issues that really matter to people in this country. So we're so doing the hard the, yards. So you'll take this one world government plan to the next election, that'll be clear that Australian voters at the next federal election know that if they vote Green they are voting for a push for a new world government? Well, again, I emphasise it's not world government. That's a very different idea from a world parliament that brings representatives that are elected by the people from around the world. Because at the moment, we have many world bodies that are very... Um, well, having a great influence on the world, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, they dictate uh, so much to how the world works. And they're unrepresentative, unelected bodies. There's actually deals done between the World Bank is always headed up by a US citizen. The International Monetary Fund is always headed up by a European um, leader. Now, that's just deals done between those organisations. It's Australian money, world money that goes into those organisations, but ordinary people don't have a say. Senator Bob Brown was working to put people at the front of making these critical decisions. Another point that uh, Senator Brown made in the speech that was that he saw the last century as one of a contest between communism and capitalism. And he says the way forward is actually some of both, some communism and some capitalism. What what is, it, what is this communism that the, the Greens supposedly now support? How much communism do you want to see in the way Australia goes forward? Look, I think, again, you need to actually give the quote, Chris. He spoke about elements of socialism and elements of capitalism. And all Bob was setting out there is that we need to ensure that markets do not dictate to every aspect of life. And, again, I think this is something that's come through in recent elections. With why, but why would he put it in those terms? Why would he put it in those terms that we need some communism and some capitalism? And I, mean, I would have thought we'd move beyond communism, surely. Well, he does make that point. We're in a new century. We need to ensure that the resources of the world are wisely used for um, everyone and for future generations. So that's what Bob was identifying there in a very fair way. If you read the speech, it is well explained that it is about not allowing markets to dictate to every aspect of our lives. We need to protect, protect our public assets so people have the education, the health and the housing that they have a right to. That's what Bob was explaining. I certainly have read the speech and I would encourage any viewers who are interested in it to look at the speech. You can see it on the Greens website or just Google the third annual Greens oration and, uh, and uh, indeed, Senator, uh, people should read the speech in full context. Look, I just want to go to the broader political developments in the country at the moment, Senator, and of course we had the Queensland election last week. Labor was really uh, annihilated there. The Greens didn't do too well, but I won't make too much of that because I think Queensland is tough for you because it doesn't have an, op doesn't have an upper house. Um, but we see also that the, the polling is telling us Labor is having a lot of trouble around the country. Now, you're in formal alliance with the Labor Party. You've dragged them to the left on a number of issues, the carbon tax being the most prominent one. Do you concede or do you worry that your own party is actually helping to uh, destroy the future of the Labor Party? 
Labor's problems are of Labor's making. It's like that they don't have confidence in themselves and they've lost the confidence of the electorate. Uh, clearly, they need to get back to addressing issues around cost of living, uh, taking further action on climate change, protecting public assets. And I think a really key one is also the issue of democracy, some of the things that we've just spoken about. And in Australia, a lot of that is to do with ending corporate donations and political donations from other organisations. People can see this is having a damaging impact on the democratic process. Labor really so, has to get back to basics. So we've hit, seen some, uh, some prominent former Labor leaders say that the party has lost its way. Do you believe, as, as a Green, that the Labor Party has lost its way? Well, I think for a long time, Labor has tried to walk both sides of the road in terms of uh, talking to their working class base, but l working very closely with corporations. And people are, have often lost out in terms of policy outcomes there. And we've seen uh, many angry voters, particularly in New South Wales and Queensland. And that really is a reminder that Labor has to bring in changes, both in terms of the policies it takes forward. I think it needs to have the convictions because some of the issues that they have done have been good, but then they often backtrack. The mining tax being a classic example. The initial uh, mining uh, tax proposal, what would have brought in $10 billion a year? We ended up with a watered down form because oh. Labor went wobbly on it. So they do need to have conviction and have the courage to come forward with policies that benefit the majority of the people and the environment. All right. Well, thanks very much for joining us today, Senator Lee Rhiannon. I appreciate your time. I've had trouble getting Green Senators on the program, uh, and uh, I think that speech was, was really out there. But I, I really appreciate you coming in and explaining your perspective on it uh, today. Thank you, Chris. And we'll be back after the break with our political panel. Well, we'll look at some of the other quite, quite incredible issues that are developing in national politics this week.